Hello, my name is Frank Christensen and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFAF in Europe. In today's training tape, we're looking at how and when to use the flag and the beanbag. So we'll look at different ways of, of throwing your flag and we're also looking at, at different ways of, of using your beanbag, uh, both how to, but also when to, and especially when not to use your beanbag. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look at the mofo to see what that has to say about this topic. On this first play, we're looking at the umpire who's going to have a, a beanbag because the ball is fumbled. And that is a, a correct situation to get a beanbag out. Uh, nice and easy way, underhand, uh, getting the beanbag to the spot. And this is, this is how we want this done. Uh, correct use beanbag and good job finishing the play and, and officiating uh, after the ball is dead signaling uh, direction because of the turnover everything is is correct and it's worth noting here that that a fumble is one of the situations where it's correct to use the beanbag you know we wouldn't want uh, a beanbag on a muffed snap or a muffed uh, uh, long snap or or, or a, a snap under uh, under center we're not using the beanbag on the spot of interception or the end of a free kick so there are a number of situations where sometimes officials use the beanbag where they shouldn't but here it is a, a correct use uh, well done and and correctly officiated by this umpire here's another fumble and another correct beanbag this time by the referee uh, see there the ball comes out and that is a uh, this is not so had he muffed this backward pass, that would not be a, a, a situation for a beanbag. But since he's got the ball here and now he fumbles it, this is a, a, a situation where we would like a beanbag. And there it is by the umpire, or the, uh, the referee. Now, a couple of things here. It's important to let this play out. Uh, in this situation, the, uh, the referee is a little too eager to get close to the play. Um, it, it, can, it can certainly officiate the, 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 the fight for the ball uh, back there from around the hash yard or the hash mark. See, right now the ball is still alive and people are coming in, flying all over the place and the referee is already getting into the pile. It's just a little too early, too quickly to get this close to the players. Another thing uh, right there, it certainly looks like the the defender is go is going to land on the ball and 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 uh, recover that. But like I said, let it play out because he doesn't get it. But I suspect that the wing here at the bottom, he anticipated this wing uh, or this uh, this defender recovering the ball because he comes in here winding the clock so I'm guessing that on the sideline he saw the defender getting close to the ball and and then he started killing the clock which necessitates him winding it here so let the play uh, play out so to speak uh, and then afterwards uh, you know sort out who's got the ball and uh, if you if you want to stop the clock because there is a huge pile here that's fine uh, while you're figuring out who's got the ball and then if you determine that the offense has the ball then you can go ahead and wind it uh, immediately again afterwards. As you can probably guess here comes a punt and here's another example of a, of a correct use of a beanbag which is the end of the kick and and even though there we go with the with the beanbag even though we don't have a return here I, I still recommend uh, for deep officials to drop a beanbag at the end of the kick just to get into a good habit of it uh, because you never know what happens if the ball gets uh, displaced or uh, you know something happens down there and all of a sudden we need that uh, post 
uh, scrimmage kick enforcement spot. And if we don't have the habit of, of dropping the beanbag, then we'll, we'll end up setting ourselves up for, for missing it. Uh, in, in this situation also, the, uh, the, the bag judge doesn't get a chance to do the, uh, the, uh, the touching signal because he gets the ball right away. But I'm sure once, you, once we put the ball down here, there's still plenty of time to do the signal and, 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 and signal direction of the play. But in any case, this was just an illustration of a, of a, of a good example of, of using the beanbag even though we don't have an end or, or a return here. Here's another punt and another situation for the back judge to use his beanbag. And in fact, on this play, even though it doesn't look like it from the snap, it turns into a very, very long play. And the back judge does a good job here of first getting a beanbag in the end zone and then the second beanbag uh, at the end of the kick. So a good example of a, of a situation where it's nice for the deep wings to actually have two beanbags. In these next clips, we're looking at flag throwing mechanics. And the first one here is the line judge at the bottom of the screen. So we're not really worried about the, the quality of the call, uh, but merely the, uh, the adjustment of the flag here. And, and really, it, it just looks a lot better that, you know, initially we want to try to get the flag to the spot of the foul, at, at least in this case. And then when we're a little bit off, it's perfectly fine to you know, stop the clock, that's good, pick up your flag, and then go to the spot and drop it. Instead here, he just kind of tosses it, and that's never going to be super accurate either. And, and he's even going to go past the flag here. So in, instead of just tossing it there, you know, walk to the 25 and make it look like this is exactly where you want to drop your flag and then drop it right at your feet as you're as you're walking by and going to the referee. So it just looks a lot better and we get much more accuracy that way. On this next play, or, or rather after this next play, we're looking at the umpire and he's going to get a, a personal foul, unnecessary roughness there, a good pickup. And you know when it's a dead ball foul like this, or even if it's an unsportsmanlike, getting the getting the flag up in the air is, is a very good idea. So an under underhand flag here is is preferable, um, and it does two things. One is is we don't need the spot, so we don't need to get the flag over there uh, to the spot necessarily. And the second part is, uh, you know, it's after the play. It's nice to get the flag up high so that everybody can see it. Everybody can can realize that. Okay, the, the play may be over, but now we've got a we've got a flag, and and this also communicates to the other officials that this is a this is a, a, a possibly a, a dead ball foul and not a, uh, a potential spot foul. Now that being said, uh, this hit right here should probably have been seen by more than just the umpire. Uh, there should be some deep officials, some some backside wings, and 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 some people that, that that could have and should have been been looking at 52 and, and looking at how he speeds up after the play is over should be an indicator that we need to, to watch him and, and what he does. But in any case, uh, good job by the umpire to throw this flag the way he did. So we just had a situation with a, with a good underhand throw. Here we have a situation where an overhand throw would be much, uh, much more preferable. So we've got a, a DPI and, and, and uh, let's not worry about how good the, the, the call was. But DPI uh, a lot of times is a spot foul. Now even though it's more than 15 yards down the field, we really don't want to get into well, inside of 15, we can go overhand, and, and beyond 15, it's okay to go underhand. Uh, anytime we have this kind of a light ball foul, let's just go ahead and throw it uh, overhand. Here we've got the deep wing first throwing underhand, and then we've got the short wing right there throwing also underhand. And 
regardless of, of how close they get to the spot here in this specific situation uh, hopefully we can agree that that uh, all all things being equal uh, we will be more accurate or closer to being accurate if we throw the flag overhand and also you know in, in a situation like this if, if if I were to be the referee or, or, or a spectator or, or a supervisor or something like that and I see after this play I see the wing throwing an underhand like that in my mind I would be expecting him to come in with an unsportsmanlike or a sideline interference or something like that and not the DPI flag so uh, in situations like this where, where the, the spot uh, can be critical let's go ahead and throw these flag overhand. On this last play we're looking at the line judge here at the bottom and the umpire. We're both going to call this uh, personal foul face mask right there by the defense. And uh, they both do a good job of, of getting the flag in overhand so that we get it uh, fairly close to the spot and, and you can argue and, and rightfully so that in this situation here we don't need the spot because it's a defensive foul but again we're not going to uh, we don't want to, to 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 have to think about well was this a defensive foul so I can throw it underhand or was it an over or an offensive foul so I may need the spot and so basically if, if it's something that where we could need the spot uh, the live ball foul uh, then we want to go ahead and throw the flag overhand so that we get more accuracy and and leave you know the uh, the false starts and the uh, and the dead ball stuff uh, for the underhand throw so so good job by these officials to throw this flag overhand and that was the training tape on beanbags and and flag throwing i hope you found something you can use on the field